Thanks for being with us once again for another one of our live streams. This time, protecting your brain. And we were teasing on the broadcast earlier, protecting your dome piece, protecting your brain. The um, previous ones that we have just completed, they're up on the archives on guarding your heart. Guarding your heart, not just this heart itself, but all the circulatory pathways that feed the heart. So we're going to continue to work through the body. We're going to work through some basic areas. We'll probably do something on digestion in the future and why do we have so many digestive issues. But this one, what about the brain? So much research. We're pouring tons of money. We're pouring millions upon millions of dollars into research. And yet I feel like we've gone nowhere in decades with Alzheimer's, dementia, senile dementia, cognitive and mental decline. And you would, you know, you, you, the thought process is, well, I'm just getting older. So that's what happens. Well, to a degree, yes. I, you know, this, the body ages, you know, as, as indicated with age spots and brown spots. The body ages, no question. Um, we know that. <clears throat> Where I think we're getting into trouble is that we're aging prematurely. We're aging incredibly rapidly. The problem is, as well, that we isolate these areas. We think, well, it's just aging and it's just part of the process. And we don't see that areas of the body, our circulatory system, our vasculature, our joints, our heart, our brain, you have to see that as aging as well. And you say, well, that's a contradiction. You just said that you're aging. Yes, I, we are aging. I'm aging, unfortunately. The reality of it is, are we doing anything to reduce that process? You say, well, it can't be done. Yes, it can. And I'm going to give you factors protecting, guarding your brain. What are some of the triggers? What are some of the influences? And we're going to talk about it. Um, is this completely an unattainable area to improve and deal with some of these areas? No, it's not. So while we're spending millions upon millions into the billions on brain research, Alzheimer's research, I feel like we're going nowhere fast. I feel like there's nothing that's come forward that's been solid. Unfortunately, we're looking always to the world of pharmacology, which is my original background, don't have a problem with that. It does not hold all of our answers. And you'll see why in a few minutes. As always, before we get started, um, I want to read to you <clears throat> real quick as a point of encouragement. Um, I'm going to read you just what the theme of this psalm is, Psalm 81. When there is no relief in sight, God understands even our deepest misery. One of the sons of Korah, possibly the man that mentioned in Second Chronicles, is the one that is involved with this. But the psalmist here says in verse 1, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Now when you think about this, this is a literal, complete salvation. Physical, emotional, spiritual. This is the whole body, the whole mind, the whole everything. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night, <clears throat> I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles. And my life draws near to death. I am counted amongst those who go down to the pit. I am like the one without strength. I am set apart with the dead like the slain in the grave, whom you remember no more, who you are cut off from your care. As you would read through the rest of this, you will see that not only in the midst of this despair, and as the psalmist is completely just mentally, emotionally, physically distraught, as we would in today's terms just say, blown out. He's blown away. But look how he starts this psalm. Lord, you are the God who saves. Day and night, I cry out to you. It's a prayer of submission. It's a prayer of complete surrender. And ultimately knowing that there's only one that holds his answer. He's holding on to God. He goes through and he depicts and lays out his troubles. But I cry unto you for help, O Lord. In the morning my prayer comes uh, before you. Why do you reject me? Why do you hide your face from me? Your wrath has swept over me. All day long it surrounds me like a flood. You have taken me from my friend and my neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Ultimately, as he pours his heart, and it's okay for us to pour our hearts out to God, but as he pours his heart out to God, the statement at the beginning, I believe, is the statement of clarity. Lord, you are the God who saves me. And day and night, 
I cry out to you. Folks, if you want further information, many of you are already on the website, askjoedematteo.com. We have a lot of live streams. Um, we have a bank of them. <clears throat> we want to continue. We're just going to keep doing them until there's no more to do. I don't know what else to say. And we'll probably add or we'll probably do protecting the brain part two as we find some new things that come about. The, the Protecting the dome part two. Um, but I, I want to have some fun with this today. You say, fun? An aging brain? Yeah, fun. I think I want to. I want to motivate you guys. I want to encourage you. You just heard that great song uh, done by Chris Tomlin. Um, just love that. And sometimes we need to be loose and free before God. Where so many of us are battling so many stressors and issues of life. So let's talk about it. Let's protect the brain today. What are the triggers? What are the key areas that affect your brain? I think we have the thought process today that it is all our genes that we are destined to have our brain disintegrate, drift off into um, Alzheimer's and dementia and never to return. And so we have, the, 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 the world of pharmacology and medicine has in essence painted a picture that your focus is right here, that it's your genes. Is there a portion of truth to that? Most certainly, ApoE4 gene, if, if you have that allele, a genetic tendency, I don't know what it is. I think you have a two and a half fold, don't quote me on the details, increased risk. So there's no doubt there's a genetic tendency here. There's no doubt about it. But that's one aspect. Excuse me. We have a dozen plus other components that have to be dealt with. So um, I'm not denying the existence of a genetic link here. <clears throat> I think we make a mistake of bearing down completely. I can't change this per se. I can't change that. What I can do, that's an unalterable scenario that I have no control over. What I can do is alter these other areas, and that's what I want to get after here today. I'm going to bounce around. Let's start here. Inflammation is number one. Um, you see, the other portion of my thought process here today is to make sure you understand that you will see many parallels. When we did protecting and guarding the heart, there are many parallels in this area, and I actually alluded to the brain at that point in time as well. What do I mean by parallels? You see a lot of the same truths if you reduce inflammation, if you improve your circulatory capacity, if you improve your antioxidant capacity, not just in taking supplements, for goodness sake, in what you do, how you take care of yourself, you reduce circulatory damage. You reduce cardiovascular damage. You reduce the potential for neuropathy. You reduce the potential for the brain to age prematurely. Lord willing, I want to be doing this 20, 30 years from now. I do. I really do. I love what I do. I love being able to engage many of you this way. I need to be doing some things to protect my brain. So, I started the morning was with, there's a massive amounts of uh, raspberries in here. Essential Meal Plus almond milk, and a half of a banana. Loaded with antioxidants, clean sources of protein, good sources of protein. You, you, you've, you've got to be engaged. You've got to engage us. So let's get to it. Inflammation. How do we reduce inflammation? First and foremost, you reduce inflammation via what you consume. If I eat foods that are pro-inflammatory, a lot of whites, a lot of refined, a lot of sugars, a lot of rancid fats, I produce inflammation in the body. If I do not eat things like olive oil, nuts and seeds, berries, blueberries, blackberries, um, good sources of fats, high fiber. Fiber could be your big friend here. More fiber. You reduce inflammation. If I reduce inflammation, <clears throat> I, I don't want to say this every time because it's, I'll add another 10 minutes to this. But each one of these areas, whether it's managing homocysteine, managing inflammation, managing glycation, I'll explain them, managing elevated insulin, each one of these lowers your risk for mental and cognitive, each one of them. Well, how much, Joe? Does that guarantee me? I don't know that it guarantees you. What I'm telling I don't want to bore you. I want to make this practical. I I've got scads of information on 
and articles that I can just start reading to you and documentation. Mechanism explains the link between APOE and Alzheimer's. How trans fats and saturated fats, archives of neurology, February 2003, damage the brain. How low B12 status, Journal of Neuro, uh, Neurosurgery and Neurology and Psychiatry, 2000. I mean, I can do that. I can bore you to, you, you, you'll turn me off. And you'll watch cartoons again. Don't, please don't watch cartoons. <laughs> or Dr. Oz. <laughs> That's good, Joe. Yeah, whatever. I don't want to knock Dr. Oz. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. Uh, inflammation. Each one of these areas, if I get you to manage homocysteine, manage insulin, manage inflammation, I, I'm going to say this. <clears throat> I'll go out on a limb. Nothing fancy, no games, no gimmicks, no hype, no magical products. I guarantee you, you reduce the risk. I guarantee you that. I look you right in the eye. I guarantee you, you reduce the risk for early onset dementia. I guarantee you, re you, you lower your risk dramatically if you do these things. Lower the inflammation via what you eat, what you consume. Know that your diet plays a key role. Number two, you consume a lot of sugar, you spike your, your blood sugars, you spike insulin, but here's what's happening. I'm telling you, you're, there are certain protein factions in your blood and they link up. I talked about this on the, uh, I don't know, if can I see this down here? I don't know. Um, I, I t protein links up with sugar and it forms something called glycation. Okay. Glycation forms cellular cement. Cellular cement will actually damage, and it's, it's, it's involved in neurofibrillary tangles. That's technical. Neurofibrillary tangles are involved with Alzheimer's. All right? I, I need to reduce the inflammation process. I need to reduce glycation by reducing the amount of sugar. So the next time you have that big bowl of ice cream, with tons of whipped cream and chocolate sauce. I mean, you need to really think about that. Say, Joe, you never eat ice cream. Now, I just had some uh, Talenti's ice cream the other night. I did. I don't need a ton of it. I don't eat it away from meals. I had a little bit right after I ate. Why? Because it won't spike my blood sugars as much. Joe, you mean to tell me you never eat pie? I don't really like cakes and that type of thing. No, I do eat pies, real berry pies. Real, I don't like that canned stuff. I mean, real fruit pies. Um, I usually get them at Whole Foods, and um, I'll have a piece. I will, but I don't do excessive things. I don't eat sugar all day. I do not eat, you know, candy bars. I'm not always trying to spike my blood sugars. I don't drink a ton of caffeine. I don't artificially stimulate my body. I'm trying to. When I'm hungry, I'm going and back and grabbing an apple. I'm coming out here. I have raw nuts here. I have a protein bar. I have, a, I have a, a, a nut bar, literally nut bars. Live foods, real foods, something good, something nutrient producing. And I'm always after not raising sugars because I know when I raise the sugar, it cross links with protein and it forms something called glycation. Let's eliminate that. You've got to have a homocysteine level. And <clears throat> Discussed it with the cardiovascular scenario, protecting and guarding your heart. If your homocysteine is high, um, there is absolutely, I don't care what anybody tells you, the literature is replete. There is a link. Is it causal for dementia 100%? I don't know what it is. Look at all the dynamics. But I know that if your homocysteine is elevated, you raise your, your risk for dementia. Let's have a homocysteine level done. You need to get a homocysteine level. High insulin, I already talked about that. If your insulin spikes because of a poor diet and consuming a lot of sugar and you're addicted to sweets, you are, I'll make a black and white statement, you are aging your brain clearly. Don't make me, don't make me bore you and turn me off. I, it's in here. You consume a lot of sugar, you spike your blood sugar, you spike your insulin, you are damaging your brain. Now, before you get guilty and want to, you know, and get crazy here, you, you need to change what you're doing. That's all I can tell you. Change what you're doing. Pessimism. If you're a pessimist, there's no doubt pessimism links to age-related, enhances age-related cognitive decline. 
Stress. We're all exposed to stress. Stress, high cortisol, melts the neurons in the brain. So literally what happens is you've got these neurons. They send acetylcholine, <clears throat> neurotransmitters, norepinephrine, dopamine, epinephrine, serotonin, across what's called a cleft. This middle part is the cleft that has to send communication back and forth through these, the, off of these neurons. When I have low essential fatty acid status, high stress and high cortisol, high components that cause glycation, these neurons literally shrink. Communication is lost. There's a, there's a, there's a diminishment of, of, of communication. Black and white. Your homocysteine is high, you age your brain. You, um, where was I at here? Uh, stress, pessimism. I lost my, thank you, thank you, Jen. Um, um, pessimism. If you're a pessimist, goodness gracious, that's why I want you in here. It, it's hard to be pessimistic if you're reading the Word of God with an open heart and an open mind to receive what's in here. doesn't mean your life is fancy, you know, whatever, it's footloose and fancy free, whatever. doesn't mean everything goes your way. I just talked about that earlier this morning. God tests us. We, Joseph, Joshua, Mo, Moses, just look at, look at, look at Abraham. Look at the Old Testament guys. They were tested. They were tested. God was doing a work in them. But through that, you can incur, gain encouragement and strength, just as I read to you. No matter how bleak it is, the psalmist said, but God, I hold on to you for I know that you save me. If we can't get outside of ourselves, if I think I have all of my answers to my life's problems, my family problems, my business problems, I am sadly mistaken. If I'm a pessimist, literature is clear pessimistic personalities, it's in journals of psychiatry, pessimists have greater cognitive decline, mental decline, dementia. This is not just about Alzheimer's. High stress, we need to manage our stress levels better. We need to be on adrenal support products. You consume a lot of saturated animal fats. Saturated fats, period, and animal fats. It displaces good fats in the brain, moves them out, and ages, literally the brain ages those neurons. Low magnesium and low zinc status. There is legitimate literature that documents that individuals with low mineral status have a higher rate of cognitive decline. Why? Because heavy metals, which we'll get to, will displace these good guys that are important for brain and neurotransmitter production and health in the brain amongst other things in the body. They diminish. When we are low in mag and zinc status, we have a huge link. Sedentary lifestyles. <clears throat> Literature is repeat, le replete. If I get you to exercise and move, even if you just do only aerobic, where you're on a treadmill, you walk briskly, or you run, or you're on a bike, or you're on a a, 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 you know, a treadmill, uh, you know, all the different types of bikes that you can use. Increasing circulation, increasing oxygenation, increasing blood flow to the brain will absolutely protect your brain. There's no question. They show about a 30% improvement in cognition in individuals that exercise regularly. If you're sedentary, it's a trigger though, right? Uh, uh, an increasing sedentary lifestyle will absolutely lead you to more cognitive decline. Let's deal with it. Low antioxidant status. So what am I talking about here? Joe, you just want me to take more supplements. Well, no, but you need to take Perfect E. You need to take buffered C ascorbates. You need to take something like the resveratrol plus. We've got purple preps, uh, reds and purples, probably the purples in this area. One scoop a day in some water, loaded with natural antioxidants that are protective. What about your diet? Do you eat yams? Do you eat sweet potatoes? Do you eat tomatoes? Do you eat broccoli and cauliflower? Do you eat greens? Do you eat um, spinach? Do you eat raw, fresh fruits? I'm not even going to get into right now whether it's organic and all that stuff. Just, just the basics. Do you eat foods that are rich in antioxidants that do what? Protect your brain. So a sedentary lifestyle, low antioxidant status, huge, huge issue. Let's jump over real quick. Free radicals. That ties to this antioxidants. The more that free radicals are running around in your body, 
because of low antioxidants. So what would that be like? So that's the guy that gets up in the morning, doesn't want to eat breakfast because he doesn't eat breakfast, or he just eats a bagel. <clears throat> um, he's busy in the morning and he's at work and um, lunch is kind of hit or miss. He just grabs a hoagie. Um, he gets into the afternoon <clears throat> and um, whatever, maybe he grabs, he kind of gets a little low tide, so he has a cup of coffee or maybe a, a Coke or a Pepsi or a soft drink. Um, he has something that's just, that has no nutrient value. He comes home, maybe the kids have soccer or baseball, and so they're busy, and so they're just going to grab a pizza afterwards. I mean, look at that day. That's, that's America 101. Literally, much in the way of processed, wheat-based products, grains, refined foods, very little. The closest thing that that guy got that day in his diet, that's terrible English, was the tomatoes on the pizza, the antioxidants, the lycopenes, and the lutein and some zeaxanthine. It's pretty pathetic. I'm not saying you've got to eat perfectly. I don't want you to eat neurotically. But if you don't look at how you eat, you have a ton of free radicals running around. It will age. I don't care how old you are. <clears throat> you could be 30 and doing this, and it ages your brain. We talked about blood flow. If I have diminished, what, am I, what should I take to increase my blood flow? I don't think you take anything. You need to, if you're taking buffered C ascorbates, the omega 800s, and you're taking Perfect E, those are basic nutrients. There's a lot of other things you can do. I'd, I'd get you on, you know, MTHF, a product we have called MTHF, which is a type of a, a, a specific form of folic acid that enhances blood flow. And we can do all that. <clears throat> but how do I get you to increase your blood flow? By reducing a sedentary lifestyle, walk, exercise, swim. You got bad joints, you swim, whatever you got to do. Because if you don't diminish or improve blood flow, you're going to have a problem. We already talked about metals. This is hotly debated. <clears throat> There's lots of research in the medical community. They do never want to talk about this. Heavy metals, dental amalgams, <clears throat> this is a huge problem. Aluminum. They say, well, we can't find this always 100% of the time. Therefore, if we can't see it 100% of the time, we look at the body as like a science equation or a chemistry equation, which is nonsense. There are so many dynamics. Because what if I have metals, and on top of that, I have a very sedentary lifestyle, I love wings. I eat a ton of wings and saturated fats. I've got seven or eight mercury amalgams, and um, I have a low B12 status. All of these things factor in. So we're not saying, I'm not saying alone that it's aluminum or metals, but there is no doubt. There's no doubt. Why would I say that? Because we have animal studies that document that if you've got mercury amalgams, and as it off-gasses, and it does, by the way, um, that it accumulates in neurologic tissue. Mercury does, yes. And the neurologic tissue running to the brain, it's in laboratory animals. They document it in the brain. When they even inject it into the gum line of sheep, they'll find it in your brain. So don't tell me. Do not tell me. And if you're a scientist and you want to debate this, I'm all over it. I'm ready to go. Don't tell me that amalgams and heavy metals don't play a role. I didn't say they're singularly causal in nature uh, uh, by themselves. I will tell you, this is a human body with the dynamics. And we have people literally <laughs> displaying Alzheimer's symptoms in their 60s now. Parkinson's. It's, it's unbelievable. I work with people 50 years of age. I've had one in their late 40s with Parkinson's, neurodegenerative disease. Do not tell me that some of these things aren't playing. I don't want to hear it because you're wrong. It's playing. Is it solely the issue? I don't know that it's solely the issue. But if I have a poor diet and I got heavy metals, that's a time bomb. That's, that's a grenade waiting to explode. All right, metals without question. You say, okay, now what do I do? Now I got to go detox the metals. Well, let's not get so paranoid. Let's make sure we're limiting our exposures, number one. Number two, let's make sure we've got plenty of antioxidants on board, as we're talking about, so that you negate some of that. What helps you to detoxify? N-acetylcysteine, NAC, raises your glutathione. Buffered C ascorbates, raises and helps glutathione and alpha lipoic acid, helps you to detoxify. If you're constipated, we've got to get you moving your bowels. You should do a couple of days of a mini fast slash detox a couple times a year. You should do that. 
We've got great agents out here. We've got things like uh, MediClear, MediClear Plus, help you detoxify, help you clean up your body, do a C flush. Many, many options here. If you've never had a B12 level, we need to do it. Why? If it's low, what we find, an individual 60 and above, if they're in the lower quadrant, there's it, the, the, you stratify B12 levels. This is the lowest range. This is the highest range. If you're down here versus up here, there's a 25% reduction in hippocampal brain membrane tissue. It shrinks by 25%. Well, if I, if I lose part of my hippocampus, my ability for recall, memory, functionality is gone. 25%. How many of you would like to lose 25% of your body weight if you're overweight? You'd love that, right? You know, if you're overweight, you lose 25%, you're, you're going to be thrilled. Think about losing 25% of your brain volume, your portion of your brain. And it's, and it's absolutely linked to low B12 status. All right, so what have we covered? We've covered metals. We didn't really cover, well, I did cover genetics. I do believe genetics play a role. Tau proteins are what are involved in Alzheimer's and we call them neurofibrillary tangles. We don't know how, that, that's where science is pretty much. That's where the world of research is, is to try to change that process. I don't want to try to change that process. I want to change all the other factors, the, the mercury, the metals, the high insulin, the pessimism, the high stress, the low magnesium and zinc status, the low antioxidant intake, a sedentary. If you do these things, you greatly, you just take this to the bank, you greatly reduce the components that are promoting brain degeneration. Okay, I am going to get ready to go to a break. Um, and I, I don't, when I put kind of the summary portion of this together on the back side, I don't know that I'm going to have a black and white. Well, you need to do this. You need to eat this many calories. This is the type of food, you know. I don't know that I'm going to have that type of scenario for you. I'm going to have a rounded out general protocol that you need to keep in mind and be aware of. So as we go to this break, I want you to listen to this little worship song. Give me a minute just to cool down, turn these lights off a little bit and breathe. And we'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us. Coming back with us and staying tuned. Let's wrap this up. How do we save? How do we protect our brain? I don't care what age you are. You need to be on a process, not with some gimmick, not with, you know, seeing who has the latest thing on a radio show or a TV show. I don't care what their credentials are or what they're not. This is not about gimmicks here today. This is not about some protect the brain, get rich quick scheme kind of a thing. This is there, are there certain nutrients that could do amazing things? I could talk to you about NADH. I think that's grossly underused. NADH, uh, I think it's a phenomenal product. I don't talk about it enough. Phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylcholine, there, brain vibrance. I mean, there are things. There are nutrients. There are things that you could consume that would be hugely protective to your brain. So I don't want to dismiss that, and we'll come to that in a little bit. But let's get down to the basics again. How do we protect and guard your brain? Number one on, on the list not just my list, on the literature list, if I get you to exercise, there is no question you will improve your circulatory system, you will help your heart, and you will save and protect your brain. So when you begin to exercise or you say, I can't, I'm too busy, I don't have time, there's about four days a week that I am up literally at about 5.30, 20 to 6 at a minimum to be up to try to be in my garage for at least 45 minutes and working out. Why? Because I want to impress you. Not really. You're not impressed, obviously. Um, I want to impress others. Not really. They're not real impressed. You have to get a vision and a hold on a thought process that I'm doing things that are helping me. I'm being more accountable and responsible to my family and to those that depend on me. Whether you're a mom, whether you're a grandma, whether you're a father or a grandfather, or you're a, a, a young mom or dad right now in your 30s or 40s, uh, even in your 20s with young children, you are responsible and accountable to them. Let's get you doing some things that protect you and hopefully, Lord willing, improve, and it does, your longevity from a brain function. Turmeric, if you want to take one nutrient 
that actually has been shown to enhance macrophages, which go and kind of clean up debris in the brain, it's this one. Seriously. If you want to just take one thing, we have great turmeric extracts, amazing at protecting the brain. The literature is somewhat astounding. Turmeric, I know it's under curry. I don't know that I like curry per se, but uh, as far as a food, uh, as a, I don't know, what would you call that? A spice, but whatever you would call it. I don't know, flavoring, but turmeric, take turmeric. Ex by the way, exercise, let me just go back here real quick. Um, exercise is termed, now I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm going to spell this, nootrophic. I don't know if I spelled that right, but you know what that means? Trophic, meaning in favor of or causing growth of neurons in the brain. It's documented up to 20, I believe, I can't remember the, the, the data, 20 to 30 percent stimulation in enhancement of neuron production. They've actually documented that there's, now this is going to sound like nothing. <laughs> this is amazing. Exercise alone can increase brain activity, neuron functionality by 1%. You say, 1%? 1% is huge because you know what's really happening? Just as this physical body is diminishing in activity and functionality as I age, um, the brain is. So instead of you going down when you exercise, Instead of this continuing to be on a downward pattern, you actually start to take it in a, this is factual, nootrophic, nootrophic, building new neurons in the brain with exercise. You don't want to, you're too lazy, you don't have enough time, I don't know what to say, you're missing out on a big point, notice I have it as number one. Number two, curry, turmeric, let's get some turmeric into your diet, take the supplement, I have a great form, don't use junk versions of turmeric. Don't. Number three, get a B12 level. You don't want to get a B6 and a folate level, but let's take something like the daily essentials. Let's get, we're coming out with a new capsule formulation of that, by the way, easier to swallow. Um, let's get you on a good form so that you absorb it and we'll have the right form of the tetrahydrofolate in there, the right form of folic acid that crosses the blood brain barrier and that gets into the mitochondria much more effectively. Perfect E. We talked about this in guarding your heart. So do you see when I said there's many parallels? There's many parallels when you're protecting other parts of the body. The same kind of truths apply. Perfect E. There's a lot of literature on E, contrary to what you hear in the media that downplays this. Buffered C ascorbates. Why? Because of their antioxidant capacities. Remember, we've got to raise the antioxidant capacities because it protects against brain de degeneration. Let's bounce over here to um, even something like a brain vibrance. We have a prep called, uh, we don't make that. It's made by another manufacturer, Crayon Research. Um, brain vibrance. It's filled with nutrients <clears throat> that are stimulatory to the brain. Phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylcholine, acetyl-L-carnitine, and it even has some B12. I like the sublingual forms of B12, though, in this, in all honesty, but the other agents are very, very supportive to the brain functioning. You have layers, literally how the cells in the brain, the neurons, you have layers and you, have a, you almost have beds of how, these, how the brain works, but you have you know, good fats like the omegas, you have GPCs, glycerophosphocholines that are involved, and it does come from food, all right? Um, phosphatidylserine, so you have layers, and these layers, you're literally building structural layers. You're building structural strength in the lining, the tissue, and the neurons. All right, uh, let's bounce over here. We, we're brain vibrance. CoQ, believe it or not, coenzyme Q10, absorbable forms. Love it. I take, I take two 400 milligrams. You take two of the um, 200 milligram uh, of the CoQs. Matter of fact, I think I have one in my pocket right, right now. Every day, two of them. Mitochondrial support. Mitochondrial energy functions in your brain no different than it functions in other parts of the body. CoQ. Believe it or not, melatonin. Do you know that if you have a, a loved one <clears throat> that is battling some dementia, Alzheimer's, one of the best things you can do is expose them early in the morning to lots of bright light. It helps to reset their circadian rhythm. Give them melatonin at night. You might, might want to go higher. Up to 10 milligrams, and 10 milligrams in some research. Why? Melatonin 
is a scavenger of damaged tissue in the brain. It literally cleans up debris. It protects the brain. Remember we talked about sleep. See, as someone develops dementia symptoms, or as you get later on in life and you don't sleep, that is a critical, critical problem. We know recent literature teaches us that when you sleep, the worker bees come out, you clean up debris in the brain that affects cognitive functioning. You've got to sleep. If you're not sleeping, we have to get you to sleep. Number two, you use melatonin to set, reset the circadian rhythm and at the same time act as a free radical scavenger. Why is, let me, let me just stay here for one moment, why is low melatonin status a problem for a lot of people? I say, well, I heard, I heard, you know, I heard, I heard this a few months ago. Dr. Oz had on this scientist and um, I had emails about this and, and that he said that you should never use melatonin, that melatonin was bad and that when you did that, that you were upsetting the body's balance and like whatever, whatever. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you're under a lot of stress and you have a lot of demands in your life, maybe at times your diet's somewhat compromised, let me, let me just teach you something. And your trip, I don't care who this scientist is. He's not practical and he doesn't understand the dynamics of what's going on in the body. If your tryptophan status, an amino acid, is diminished to any degree, or, I'm going to say and or, that affects your serotonin production. A lot of things affect serotonin production. Stress, high cortisol, lack of cofactors, magnesium, zinc, folic acid, B12, some of the things I'm talking to you about here. There's another specific cofactor I'm drawing a blank on that helps you convert tryptophan to L5-HTP, then to serotonin. So there's another intermediate step in here. But let me show you what else. If you have low serotonin status, you cannot convert. You convert your serotonin with a methyl donor known as methionine or S-adenylmethionine, SAMe, aids the conversion of serotonin, uh-huh, melatonin. There's a lot of folks that are watching these, some of these hokey pokey shows, honestly, and that are getting bad information because like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't do that. He's a scientist and he said that if I do that, that interrupts, and, and I'm not saying that's not in part true, but if I've got some sleep issues and I'm under a lot of stress, and at times my diet is compromised, and I suffer from at times being a little blue, we call it dysthymic, a little down, and you have some lowered serotonin, you can only make melatonin from your serotonin. If you lack methyl donators, methionine B12, and if you have something called MTHFR, which I taught you about on the cardio risk issues and protecting your heart, you won't make this. And guess what happens to your brain? When I don't make melatonin, my brain ages faster. So you can choose to believe him or you can choose to believe me. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, I know who I believe. Uh, CoQ, melatonin. I'm not saying everybody should be on melatonin. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything wrong with using a couple of milligrams of melatonin. I use essential sleep at night because my, my mind's racing. Doing this stuff having to put mattresses on the truck in the morning before I come in to do the radio, before I get ready for this, and Josiah's hucking me here to get on the ball and go get the lights and turn the lights on. And you know what? Sometimes, like, my head, running business, I get employees, two offices, run websites, stuff's going on, people are unhappy. Like, you know, don't you, you have some of those things? Kids, you got stuff, finances, college to pay for, like, yo -y. right? Well, in the midst of all of that, sometimes sleep, I want broken sleep. I need to sleep. I understand the value, not just because I want to be knocked out and I don't want to be awake. There is value in sleeping. There's reparative mechanisms. I make insulin-like growth factor. I make my hormones. That's how I make my testosterone. Um, my brain repairs. 
So when you feel foggy the next day and incoherent because you didn't have a good night's sleep, it's not just because you didn't sleep well, it's because the little worker bees didn't get out there and clean up your brain. So, I take essential sleep. It's got a little bit of melatonin, a little bit of 5-HTP, and a little phenybutyric acid. Calms the brain, helps me make more serotonin, helps me to make more melatonin. I have a little bit of melatonin in there. I sleep deeper, I sleep more effectively. Boom. Okay, sleep is important. DHEA. This, this, this I think, is a diamond in the rough. DHEA, low DHEA status because of adrenal fatigue, adrenal blowout. Um, when that happens, boy, I can go on for an hour here, but you, you, when your DHEA is low, you'll make more pro-inflammatory compounds. I haven't really, I'm trying to keep these things tighter. Interleukin-6, interleukin-10, inflammatory proteins damage your heart, your vasculature, your muscles, your joints, your brain principally. Damage your brain. DHEA can counteract that. Be careful in the dosing. Women, 5 milligrams sublingual. Men, 25 to 50, okay? Sublingual only. Don't do the swallow. We have a sublingual available for you. Omega-3s. I just wrote in. I can't say enough about the omegas. It's your friend. Good forms. Triglyceride forms only. Molecularly distilled only. Do not play around with it because of concentrated forms of PCBs, PDBEs. Ours is as clean as... Ours exceeds the organic standards and purification standards set by California, which is the toughest, most stringent laws in the States, by 20-fold. It's 20 times less than their acceptable ranges, which is the most strict. I don't know what form of omega you're using, but ours is about as clean as it gets. It is the most absorbable form. It's as concentrated as you can get in that capsule. We, don't, we use no intermediaries. We, we go right to the people that make it. I get certificates of assay every time it, a, a lot comes through to us. Omega-3s, make them your friend if you want to protect your brain. HRT, bioidentical HRT, we're going to wrap this. Why would I talk about HRT here, hormone replacement? If you have low testosterone, you men. If you women have premature menopause, <clears throat> early, maybe 40s, um, you've had hysterectomies, you've lost full hysterectomy, you've been hysterectomized completely, maybe you lost both of your ovaries. Um, there is no doubt in the literature, women have higher rates of cognitive decline, dementia, there's higher rates of mental and cognitive decline if a woman has ovaries removed in their 40s with com almost complete loss and cessation of hormone production. Um, she is at a much higher rate. Can't remember the exact stats. They're significant that there's a greater decline in her mental, cognitive, functioning, awareness, recall, memory, just day-to-day -day functioning, day-to-day -day functional tasks. So bioidentical HRT plays a role. You need some help. Obviously, you know, you can call us. You can send us an email. Set up a time. Talk to Amy. Talk to Terry. Set up with Joyce or myself. Let us help you with that. We don't just recommend that. We have you do hormone panels to see where you are. Frankly, there's a lot more I could talk about. I feel like I don't want to. I feel like if I could get you doing these things, that would be great. A little booklet that I often use um, just talking about some things that you could do. Organic pumpkin seeds because they're rich in gamma tocopherols. They protect your brain. Um, <clears throat> sesame seeds, rich in gamma tocopherols. Organic walnuts, almonds, pine nuts, almond butters, ground flaxseed. Think about doing some vegetable juicing. Eat apples, pears, preferably organic. Sweet potatoes, great for your brain because of the antioxidants. Tomato juice, do some vegetable juices, do some green magma, or do some of the things that we talk about like our reds or purples. <clears throat> things that you should look to eliminate, MSG or MSG-related compounds, as much as you can organic so you minimize herbicides and pesticides. Don't spray your lawns. I have a guy come, he does my lawn with all natural ingredients. I don't even want my dogs walking in it, let alone spraying chemicals on it that I'm going to have. I'm going to be tracing through. They damage your brain. Aspartame, artificial sweeteners, 
damage and trigger the brain. Corn oils, food additives, colors, dyes, safflower oils. I guess I should have written that up for you, but hopefully that is helpful. Hopefully you got something out of this today. Let me encourage you real quick. Chapter 23. Oh, we have a, hey, I've been infected with MRSA since December of last year. I'm taking cephalexin, 500 milligrams, QID, four times a day. I've been told that a natural antibiotic would be oregano and tea tree oil in water. I don't think you'll get that tea tree oil in water. Um, with this conflict with the prescription medicine, absolutely not. You can even put that tea tree on topically. Do it, do it topically. You can do oregano orally. Um, I'd get you on some berberine extracts as well. But you won't get that in water. Water and oil. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still or quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest of valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows, and surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. That's a promise to you and I. We don't, maybe we don't feel like that at times, but that's what the Word of God says. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now I'm going to tell you something. Looked up a couple references a few weeks ago, and just reading through this and checking a couple you know, whatever I use here, I forget what those are called, but I want you to look at the words, and I'm going to read these to you. As I read the Word of God, that's really what gives life, the Word of God. But I want you, I'm going to read some of these components. Here's what you take out of this. We get the word comfort comes out of this. It declares God as our great shepherd, Jesus, the Messiah, as our great shepherd. We are promised in this psalm provision for whatever it is that we face. We are promised peace in this psalm. No matter what we face. There's pardon for our sins. There's pardon for our wrongdoing. And we see it in this psalm. We are guaranteed his presence. He says he'll be with us. Contentment comes from following him. And as we follow him, that leads to greater contentment. I mean, this is what you take out. If you take this psalm apart, again, later on, midway through the psalm, verse 4, his presence, and for your rod and they staff as they comfort me, I will fear no evil. There's preservation. So God, look at these words, preserving us. He's promised us his presence. We gain contentment from following him. There's peace, there's provision, there's comfort. Are you getting the picture? Everything that we need, everything, literally, is contained. You say, but I love my family. Yeah, I do too. It shouldn't supersede our relationship with him, but I love my work and I need my, yeah, so do I. I need to pay bills. I need to pay my employees. I still have a house payment. I still have a kid in school. But what we have here and what we see in the Psalms is that he's our everything. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, our spirits, protection, provision, plenty. I mean, look, look at those words. Let that encourage you. His presence. He guarantees provision and protection. Plenteousness. Comfort. Peace. Pardon. And contentment from following Him. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Protect your brain. I hope it blesses you. Make sure you go back and watch some of the older live streams. We've got great stuff on there. Everything from, I don't even know, protecting your skin, guarding your skin, the anti-aging, exercise, basic bands. Go back and read. We've got them labeled. Josiah went through and labeled them all. Um, make sure you go back. Turn on some of your friends to them. Be blessed. God bless you. And I'll see you at the next live stream. Have a great day.